Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the ASI number 20364. This is an automatic soap dispenser by ASI. Very common, typical soap dispenser. You'll see these out in the wild quite often. I know that I have. There's the underside of it, and we're going to describe all of these pieces and parts as we go through the entire product description. So the general summary of this is that this is a 33.8 uh, ounce capacity when filled with liquid soap uh, between the viscosity range of 50 and 3500 CP MPAS and the technical definition of <clears throat> what those letters stand for is something that you can search online quite frankly it's the definition of viscosity <clears throat> the people or person that it was named after and what the initial test was or or how it's defined so the viscosity range is measured in that terminology between those ranges uh, soap that you will find will adhere to that same sort of definition for viscosity dispenses and cycles of owner adjustable single shot volume ranging from 0.02 ounce to a half of an ounce. Uh, it will give you a f an initial factory dispensing amount of 0.034 ounce. Uh, so it'll give you a typical amount because the factory setting is probably what you're going to be accustomed to. But you can also adjust it to continuously dispense for up to 10 seconds should you need to. We'll discuss that later on. Hands-free sensor controlled by microprocessor, digital circuitry powered by four AA batteries. Fabricated of 22 gauge type 304 stainless steel, 188 stainless steel alloy, and that's important because ASI would tell you uh, to be sure that when you're looking at other manufacturers that it's 188 stainless steel. Uh, with a uniform satin finish over all the exposed surfaces, and that is indeed the case. Really, all you see on there is my fingerprint. LED to indicate function and operation condition on the front face. Unit shall mount to wall on concealed base plate with screws secured under the locked cover. Okay, That is the information below this video, the summary sort of information. Uh, there is additional information under the operation and installation uh, headings, but we're going to touch on that specifically as we move through the uh, review of the item. There are three links below this video, cut sheet, manual, and template. The template is very simple and straightforward. The installation instructions and template are included. We're first going to touch on the cut sheet because that's the next logical step. On the cut sheet, there are dimensional drawings showing the important dimensional properties of the item. You can see from that that it's five and a half inches wide. I like to test those dimensions from the factory just to be sure that nothing's changed. They have it at 10 and 7 eighths high. I would agree with that. They have a projection of 4 inch and let's test that. Indeed, that looks good. Now the category on the cut sheet called specification is handy because what it allows is for you not only to review it, which we probably pulled the summary on the extended description of the item from the specification page so we won't regurgitate all of it but it's important because let's say you're a specifier you might be uh, someone who you might be an architect and you want to specify this for a restaurant and you will lift that specification include it on your plans on your specifications and drawings and forward that out for bid on behalf of your client that's why that's important to know um, then you have the installation and operation which we will get to next. So you've got the dimensional properties. Now let's move to the link to the template and let's just review that quickly. When you look at the template it's basically going to allow you to apply that to the wall and then mark your holes for then drilling. The important thing about knowing uh, about where to place the unit is that you need two inch on the top of it because you need to get your hand inside to unlock the unit and then they want 10 inch down below the unit and that's going to be so that there's ample room because you need about three and an eighth inch from the bottom of the unit to the hand for sensing 
but they want enough distance also uh, to help um, prevent the unit from being falsely triggered from reflecting overhead lights. 10 inch is what they really want in that regard. So the template is important, but it's there for your review, and we'll talk more about installation in a moment. The last document are the installation instructions, and let's just dive right in and look at it. Um, so before, I, I suppose before we move into it, the, o, the 20364, what you need to know is it's automatic. It is 34 ounces of soap, roughly. It is controllable in terms of the amount of soap that it can dispense. It has a well-established and published maintenance uh, procedure that you follow. Once a month, you're going to clear out the tank with, flush it out with warm water and purge that through the system. You're going to top off the soap if needed, as long as you are within the 30-day maintenance cycle. That's not a problem. Uh, and then what you need to know is you're going to have a key for opening the lid. Then you're going to have a magnetic key for altering the amount of soap that is dispensed per cycle. Okay. Now, having touched on all the summary information, let's move on to the very specific task of installation. Uh, understanding the parts, applying it to the wall, and then troubleshooting it. So the important thing to know on the specifications, uh, upper left hand corner of the installation instructions, are the viscosity. You're going to want to be sure that the soap that you're putting in falls within that range, and that it is pure liquid, no grit or abrasive content, uh, and undiluted. <clears throat> pH range, that's really important to know the pH range between 5 and 9. Um, why? Well, if your soap is outside of that range, it will, over time and eventually, destroy the unit. I don't make a living engineering so automatic soap dispensers, and I'm not involved in what it takes to build one. I do know that the factory will be able to, with evidence provided from the, from the client that is making a claim for failure, you'll be able to determine if that soap is outside of the pH range. Evidence of the soap, evidence of the damage that's done, so be sure of it. And I only implore you to be sure of it because it's been an uncomfortable position that I have had to mitigate in the past where clients have used material that is well outside of the engineered range for a variety of their soap dispensers to have significant failure occur. Um, and the science behind it is clear and straightforward. Now moving on, soap capacity, we mentioned that earlier, 34 ounce. It's important to know, four AA batteries, that's easy, not provided, you'll have to get those. Estimated life uh, battery, uh, estimated battery life is 17,500 to 25,000 cycles per year. Detect detection range, three and an eighth of an inch. We talked about that. I'm gonna skip over the, the items that are not important, uh, in my opinion. Uh, sensing delay time between a half of a second and one and a half seconds. Weight of the unit, they have it at 3.3 pounds with the batteries without soap. I, that makes sense. I get 2.85 pound when I measure everything without batteries and without soap. Housing material, stainless steel, type 304, 18.8 is the alloy type. That's all important to know. It gives you an idea of what you're dealing with. I also feel that it's important to go right to step two. Uh, the item list to review the different items and to know what their names are because the names of the items will come in later during the installation procedure. Now let's take a look at it. Part one is your soap dispenser housing. That's simple and straightforward. Part two is your soap tank. That's the item that you're going to use to uh, put the soap in. That's the item that you're going to clean. Part three is your installation template and that is paper that's included in the package. Part four is the cap for the soap tank. You're not going to want to lose that at all. That's careful. Part five is the magnetic key fob, and that's here. That's going to be taped to the back side of the unit. Plastic anchors, uh, which are six by others, those are not shown. You're going to need you're going to need fasteners. Nothing. I don't believe anything is included with this. Uh, light pipe with mounting tape. Light pipe with mounting tape is an item that we're going to review when we get the uh, unit actually open. The E-114 key 
That's available uh, as a separate item, of course, but one is included. It's taped to the back of the unit with part five, your magnetic fob. Your ASI lock, that's actually included, pardon me, that's actually installed in the top of the unit. That's uh, important to have. Your control housing, you're not going to touch that very much, but you'll know it when you open the, the unit up. Your battery holder, part 11, that's important. You're going to make sure you get your polarity right on your batteries and uh, stack the batteries in there. Sensor and adjust port gasket bezel, that's down in the unit, and we'll go over that in a moment. So now, we've identified all the parts. Recommended installation requirements. Ensure that the wall mounting surface chosen for installation is smooth, flat, vertical, and clean. Ensure that you've got 10 inch below. Moving on, ensure that, ensure that you have at least two inch above. Ensure that there's no light source reflecting from the surface below the sensor up to the sensor eye. Uh, and then there's a paragraph there that says, please read all this. It's good. Now. Moving on to, that is steps one through three, installation steps. Um, tape the installation template to the wall. It's full size. Get that applied to the wall. I, ju I, I just generally trim this, masking tape, that sort of thing. Drill the four holes into the wall to receive plastic anchors. Push your plastic anchors into the holes so that the heads are flush with the wall face. Insert two pan head screws. They're looking for number eights by inch and a half by others. Um, open the dispenser housing and remove the soap tank by pulling slightly forward and then up to disengage the connector. Now what they're saying is the two top holes, uh, plastic anchors are in, run your screws, leaving them stick out about three eighths of an inch. That's because obviously you're going to get them through this hole and you're going to lock them down then tighten them up and finish, and finish off with the other holes that are down here. Now, let's open up the unit. Okay, you can only return, retra uh, remove the key when it's in the locked position, important to know. You've got a continuous piano hinge down here at the bottom that you can see. And here are the important contents. You've got your soap vessel, you've got your controller unit, you've got the uh, light, uh, what that part was called light pipe. Okay. And it's all down there. Okay, now the moving on with the installation instructions what they're saying is remove uh, remove the soap tank by pulling slightly forward and then up to disengage the connector so slightly forward and up it's all that's really happening is this piece of you know um, plastic with a rubber clear rubber sort of washer it's just connected onto this little spigot that's down here that's all there's really nothing to be concerned with about pulling that off back line it up a little bit of pressure push it in and down and it's back on it's very simple very straightforward forward and up that's it uh, Hang the dispenser housing onto the wall. The two screws we talked about, get that on. Okay. Finish off your installation with flat head screws down here. Fill the soap tank with the appropriate soap and close the top so your cap's going to come off. You'll fill that. And you're going to replace. You'll be looking at it this way so you'll be able to eyeball that to so make sure that it's lined up, down and back. And there's a small little retainer that's here and it's just going to fit right on, right on, uh, it's going to seat, on, the soap container will seat underneath there and that prevents it from moving. Now remove the battery door and holder. You're just going to pinch these two tabs and it will come out at your battery 
holder, easy, simple, and straightforward. Insert the batteries, watch your polarity, and reinstall the holder. It just snaps, as you uh, could see in here. Reinstall the soap tank onto the control module, which we've gone out of step. Close the cover and lock the dispenser. That's all that you need to do. Load it with batteries, load it with soap. Put it back up, lock it, pull the key out. Now at this point, you're ready to test. What's going to happen though is the unit is going to blink four times blue. Uh, well, let's just continue on with the setup. With completion of step 4.1, uh, 4.10, the LED will flash blue four times to indicate that the unit is ready for operation in the default timing mode. The default timing mode is 0 0.034 ounce delivered to your hand. The unit is in standby mode and with no fur and at this point no further programming is required if the amount that is being dispensed is satisfactory. Um, should it not be satisfactory, you're going to insert the magnetic fob down into here. Okay. Presentation of that will force the LED to flash once to indicate that the unit is ready for programming. Leave the MAF magnetic adjuster fob in the hole. Okay. Activate the sensor to initiate the pumping cycle and deactivate the sensor when correct cycle duration is achieved to dispense the desired amount of soap. Maximum dispense dur uh, duration is 10 seconds. Here's what all that means. Put your hand, pull it away when that's when you want it to stop the amount of soap. The unit will remember how long it is dispensing soap and that will be the new duration. So the fob is in, this has to be presented, Put your it'll flash once blue, put your hand, pull it away when you want it to stop dispensing. You might want to test the default prior to changing it obviously and know where you are. Remove the MAF and the control will remember the program duration for future activations. The unit may be reprogrammed at any time by reinserting the magnetic key and re repeating steps 5.2 to 5.4. Notice on the initial setup that several operation cycles are required to fill the dry pump with soap the first time. So what I do uh, with that is, um, it's really not a big deal, but being ultra lazy, uh, what I will do is run it one time, make sure that it works, present the key, force it to run 10 times, and then I will continue to present the hand until I've got soap dispensing, then I will reprogram it to give me just the default sort of time that I would want. Or you just keep to prime everything, which does not take very long, just keep presenting your hand. Not a big deal. Now, what is, what is a big deal is the operation and maintenance. It can be summarized by this. Use the soap that is within the prescribed requirements. Once a month, flush everything out. And if you do that, this unit, you can expect it to last an incredibly long time. I've known people that have had these working for years. I've had people that they failed in three months, and it's because of what they put into it and the fact that it was never cleaned. But proper maintenance is the key, like, like everything. Use clean soap from closed container to refill the reservoir. Ensure that soap conforms to the property ranges listed above in specification and does not contain any abrasive grits. Clean the soap reservoir of any soap residue on a monthly basis before refilling with fresh soap. That has to happen. Congealed or ossified soap deposits may lead to dispensing malfunctions. Refills by topping off are required if you're okay, if you are okay if you're in between that 30 month that 30 day, pardon me, once a month take cleaning. Clean the exterior of the housing. Stainless steel cleaner is good. They even recommend 3M product. I would I wholeheartedly endorse that. Do not soak or submerge the unit for cleaning or rinsing. Avoid directly spraying cleaners into the lock, as it is difficult to remove the residue from the inside of the working parts. Do not run under running water. The sensor lens may be cleaned 
uh, of splash residue by wiping with a soft clean rag lightly dampened with a general purpose surface cleaner suitable for kitchen or washroom countertops common sense is what that is it's 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 an eye that you you know you don't want to get anything gritty on there it needs to be clean and, and just free of debris avoid using abrasive materials or grit contaminated rags as this will scratch the lens and de degrade the operation of it actually firing when you put your hand there or triggering replace the batteries on a regular periodic frequency depending on the activity level and on cycles determined by established facility maintenance schedules meaning based on your use you're going to know how long to expect out of the batteries and what they're saying is just get ahead of that and replace the batteries it's better to do that rather than leave a unit not working that leads to frustration that leads to vandalism that's what they're saying with that troubleshooting guide um, I have trouble I have been engaged in troubleshooting these over the uh, over the telephone uh, very occasionally uh, and generally what has occurred is that there is uh, an operator error sort of condition happening with the batteries batteries are always the first thing to test it's hard to see the polarity on all that stuff um, the symptom the possible cause the remedy is all there getting to the bottom contact supplier for service does not happen often uh, you are generally going to get the unit back up and running we sell these all the time we don't have any we have an incredibly negligible amount of problem failure with them incredibly negligible the one time that we did um, ASI knew about it and replaced it instantly that was the bottom line so not a problem there as a result of that sort of um, customer service and support that you get after the sale I'm partial to ASI and it's something that I've come to rely on when dealing with them there's a link below this video to the manufacturers page where you can pull up the full line ASI catalog and review all things ASI commercial restroom equipment uh, related not only automatic soap dispensers but manual soap dispensers mirrors and grab bars toilet tissue dispensers combination units hand dryers things of that nature that link to the manufacturers page to the product catalog will allow you to review all that material if you're considering a new specification on a new building please absolutely consider ASI I would certainly encourage you to order something as a sample uh, so that you can put it through its paces and properly review it knowing that as a distributor for many years they have a technical service and customer support department that can be relied on if you have any questions on the ASI zero pardon me two zero three six four stainless steel automatic soap dispenser or any other ASI product please feel free to reach out to us thank you